And I've always heard people say, Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, yes, he did in multiple places. And this is just one of them that I ran across in my study today. John chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses first for context. The Jews therefore said to him that was cured, It's the Sabbath day. It's not legal for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, He that made me whole, the same said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who said, Take up your bed and walk? And he that was healed didn't know who it was because Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you are made whole. You've been healed. Sin no more, lest a worse thing happens unto you. The man left and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. This man was just healed after 38 years. And instead of thanking Jesus, worshiping Jesus, following Jesus loyally to the death, he runs to his enemies, the Jews, and tells them. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father works hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Today's culture, we would say that we're all children of God. Therefore he's all of our father. In Jesus' day, that's not the meaning. The Jews clearly didn't think he was saying he's just a child of God. And in fact, the Bible uses the word only begotten son of the father. So clearly there's two different meanings of the word. Then Jesus answered and said, Truly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do, wait a minute. We can't see into heavenly realms. Jesus here is claiming he can see what the Father does. For what things soever the Father does, these also does the Son likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you can marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead... What? I have never seen a human go into a graveyard raising the dead. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. If you're not that familiar with the Bible, you may not be aware, but Jesus did raise several people from the dead. When I was researching who Jesus raised, I got to see some very, very old artwork. It's the raising of Lazarus, painted in the year 1300. You'll see Lazarus in grave clothes and Mary and Martha hugging Jesus and worshiping Jesus. They were so happy. Mary and Martha were Lazarus's sisters. The story of Lazarus is in John chapter 11. And Jesus says specifically that this is done, that people may believe that the Father has sent him. Here's another depiction of the raising of Lazarus. A second resurrection that Jesus did is the widow's son, the widow of Nain. There was a funeral procession and Jesus knew that the dead person was the only son of a widow. So she not only didn't have a husband, but she didn't have a son. That story is in Luke chapter 7. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Weep not. And he came and he touched the bier, and they that bore him 
stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And Jesus delivered him back to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God has visited his people. He sure did. The third resurrection that Jesus performed was of Jairus' daughter. This picture was done in 1546. In Luke chapter 8, And behold, there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay dying. Jesus said to him, Fear not, only believe, and she will be made whole. Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. Jesus is going to judge the earth. That's deity. So that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. If you don't honor the Son of God, Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying, you don't honor God the Father, because God the Father sent his Son. Truly I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me, has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Truly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Okay, if we are children of God, will the dead hear our voice and live? No. Clearly, there is a distinction between us as children of God and Jesus as the Son of God. Making himself equal with God is what the Jews understood, and that's what we should understand. For as the Father has life in him, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. Remember, I am the resurrection and the life is what Jesus said. He can resurrect anyone because he has the life in him. He is the origin of life and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. If you and I bear witness of ourselves, like some of these faith healers do, their witness is not true. The next few verses lay out the witnesses that God has set up for Jesus, okay? If we're going to test to see if Jesus is the Son of God, if we're going to put him on trial, there will be witnesses. And there are four witnesses listed here to bear witness that Jesus is God. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Okay, he's referring to John the Baptist. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Remember, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And he let all of his disciples follow Jesus instead of him. And said, 
Jesus must increase. I must decrease. But Jesus does not receive the testimony from man. But these things I say that you might be saved. That's his goal. He wants us to have what we need to believe so that we can be saved. John was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John. So here's the second witness. The works which the Father has given me to finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Remember the blind man said in John 9.32, Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Jesus' works bear witness of him. No one in the history of the world has ever healed a blind man or turned water to wine or made a lame man walk. Okay, so his works are his second witness. Verse 37, his third witness. The Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. He's referring to the time when God's voice came from heaven and bore witness of him. In Matthew chapter 3, when John baptized Jesus, and Jesus when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. And lo, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the Father himself which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. That's pretty stunning. Jesus said, You have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Okay, this is his fourth witness the Old Testament. That would be another Bible study all in itself, how Christ is prophesied in the Old Testament. But suffice it to say, the Jews were expecting a Messiah because of the Old Testament scriptures. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify or witness of me, said Jesus. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only. Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, again he's still referring to that fourth witness, the Old Testament, much of which was written by Moses, you would have believed me for Moses wrote of me. But if you believe not Moses' writings, how will you believe my words? 